Hi card makers, it's Trisha Morris at Club Scrap with a fun edition of a card tutorial featuring the Gone Wild collection. We're gonna make 12 really awesome cards here with our kit, which I have here. We've got some really cool gold brad settings. And so you can put anything you want inside of these and then uh, spread the prongs on the back, whatever you want to attach them to. And then three beautiful ribbons, um, a frayed edge grow grain and a sheer organza as well as a jute, which I must confess to you that I completely forgot to use this in my cards. So you have some bonus ribbon you can do with as you wish. Um, your kit also includes the cut apart so that if you're not a stamper, you don't have to worry about stamping to complete your cards. But if you are, once you trim all of these, you can actually stamp your own artwork onto the ivory surface on the back side of the cut aparts if you prefer to stamp your own um, images onto the cards. Um, then you also have all of the, the cards and panels. I have mine sorted in an order to help me, but um, we'll set those aside. And of course you have a dozen really beautiful ivory envelopes to go with your cards. I've printed my instructions, so let's go ahead and get started with those cut aparts. We'll begin with the cut apart that has the long strip along the right edge, some messages, and then some patterned strips. And um, if you are new to this, you'll notice that there's a, a registration mark printed all over your um, cut apart sheet that tells you where to cut. Um, however, the first thing I'm going to cut is right along the edge of this piece of artwork here so that I can use that at a later time before I even cut near the first registration mark. So when I trimmed this piece, I just have a nice clean strip. And then I'll move on to the next registration mark, which puts me at about seven and a half inches. And then I'll slide down to about three and three quarters. Next, let's rotate this piece so it's horizontal and we'll trim the little piece off the end. And then I'll trim at the first registration mark. So once again, I've, I've trimmed past the white area so I just have a nice clean uh, piece. All right, now let's trim all of these pieces into individual sections. Now by looking at my instructions, I can mimic what's happening here and know that all of the pieces that I just cut, all these little strips, all of them will be filed into pocket or pile B. So I'm using a pocket system where the first pocket is for everything for cards in set A and the second pocket will be everything for set B and so on. So I'll just keep things organized by filing them in my accordion pocket file. I'm going to do the same thing with this next strip and start by removing off the, the narrow piece from the end and then cutting along the registration marks. I'll gather up all the little rectangles and once again all of these are filed in pocket B as well. And then I'll take the narrow little scrappy type pieces and put these in pocket C. You have to be a little more careful on this next piece because if you were to cut along this first registration mark, at some point you're going to start cutting through artwork and I'd like to avoid that. So my first cut is actually going to be vertically and it's going to be at, let's see the measurement, about four and four and a quarter. So take this piece and rotate it horizontally so that hi there wild thing is on your right and we'll cut these in individual pieces. The two tags will be filed in pocket C. And the other four little sentiments also in pocket C. And maybe while I'm thinking of it, I'll just note that you can take a quarter inch corner rounding punch or a corner chomper on the quarter inch setting and round those corners. And again, these go in pocket C. Next, let's take this and trim it horizontally, just right dividing this into two sections. Um, my measurement's going to be at five and a half. <laughs> And then I'm going to cut this piece off right against the white line. This was sort of a, a bonus strip, um, but I'm, I'm going to use it in card set C. So I'll just go ahead and file that. And now I have these um, pocket shaped pieces to trim. And we'll go in later and finish these off with a ruler and craft knife. And this is in pocket C. Next we have one more strip here. I'm going to take off the scrap from this end and I'll trim right along the edge of the artwork here so I can use that. And then along the registration mark and separate all the pieces. 
All right, this Get Wild With It component, this goes in pocket A. And all of these narrow strips, there should be four narrow ones also in pocket A. And then this last decorative strip, maybe I'll just take off that end too. We'll just use that again in pocket C. I'm not sure which ones we use, but we use a lot of them in there. Okay, then this last piece, once again, vertically, we're going to just trim this off right at the edge of the artwork here. Take the entire piece and put it in pocket C right away. And then we'll cut along the, the registration mark. So our first official cut is at eight inches. And then slide it down, we'll cut again at four. Rotate and separate the individual pieces. The four larger rectangles go in pocket A. And we're gonna set aside the little circles for later when we prepare them to go into our gold brad settings. Next, let's trim this piece. Okay, we have all these pieces with the rust frame. All four of them go in pocket B. We have two sentiments that have a teal uh, text in the middle. Those are pocket A, as well as the get wild with it, pocket A. And once again, we have a little pile of scraps. This guy, if you want to save them, can go in C, and these can go in the circular file. And by circular file, I mean garbage. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do some additional trimming to prepare our cards. If you will look in your kit, you will find one lone rust-colored panel. And the measurement of that panel is 6 by 7. We're going to trim this vertically to make um, a set of strips for our cards. So these are the measurements of trimming. Four and a half. And this is vertically again. And so my first cut's at four and a half, and then three, and then one and a half. So now I have four strips that are all the same size. They're all seven inches long by one and a half inches wide, and we're going to file these in pocket B. Next, you have a series of four brown panels. These panels measure four by five and a quarter. It's four by five and a quarter. Let's take two of them at a time, and we're going to turn them into triple panels. Our first cut will be horizontally at three and a half, and then one and three quarters. And just make sure you can see what you're doing. You may gather up the pieces, and they should all be the same size, and they're all going to go in pocket B. Same thing with the other pair of panels. So horizontally into the trimmer. First cut is at three and a half, and then one and three quarters. Stack them up, pocket B. You will also find in your kit a large piece of ivory paper. Again, it's just a single. There's only one of them. And this will also become a series of panels for card set B. So B has a lot of panels. And sometimes just giving you one piece rather than counting out eight little pieces, um, it allows us to be more accurate in your kit packing. And it's not a difficult thing for you to, um, to create with your trimmer. Okay, so our first cut, we're going to place it in horizontally. First cut's at eight and three quarters seven and a half, six and a quarter, five, three and three quarters, two and a half, one and a quarter. That effort gave us eight white panels and they will also be filed in pocket B. Now it's time to do some scoring, so I'll set the trimmer aside. Here's my score pal, and I have a series of four, uh, four and a quarter by 11 amber colored panels. So I'm gonna place one in my score pal horizontally, and we have a ton of scoring to do on this. And there's no flipping required, so it's pretty easy. First number is one, two and three quarters, three and three quarters, five and a half, seven and a quarter, eight and a quarter, and 10. Wow, that's a lot of scoring. You know, go ahead and do that for the remaining three panels. We have just a little bit more prep work to do, but for now, let's put this in pocket A. 
Next find the four rust colored panels that are all the same size. They're six and a half by seven. Let's place them vertically into the, into the score panel so that the reading on the top is six and a half. And we'll score at five. Now that seems like a really weird measurement for a, for a card base, but basically this is gonna fold and become a flap and this is gonna be the base of our card. So just trust me on this. When I do score, I'm placing it with the textured side up into this particular scoring device. So again, vertically, score at five. Place these pieces in pocket B, and now take your ivory card bases. These are nine by six and a quarter. We'll score them horizontally in half at four and a half. Take all of these pieces and put them in pocket C. Then you should have four skinny teal panels, pocket A. You'll have four larger ivory panels, all the same size, pocket B. And finally, four light brown panels, pocket C. That's all the prep work. Let's start making some cards. I'll begin by taking every single thing out of pocket A. Let's gather some items that we need to make one of the cards, and that'll be the, just the first card that you see on page two in your instructions. It's the happy birthday card. Once you've determined the pieces you need to make the card, you can take the remaining items from the pocket and place them down into the corresponding envelope for that card size. In this case, it's an A2 envelope, and it holds a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. That way you can keep organized, and once you have your prototype, all you have to do is make the rest. Okay, so let's begin with our card base. We have tons and tons of score lines, but what I want to do is create a slot in the center score line, and I can easily see which score line is in the center. And the width of the slit needs to match the width of my panel. So to do that, you could you can approach it a number of different ways. Um, if you want, you can just place the panel and visually center it on here, or you could use a ruler, but I'm just gonna mark on that score line where the panel starts and ends if I place it centered from top to bottom. Now I need to cut a slit into the score line, so for that I'll use a ruler and a craft knife. I just put a fresh blade in my craft knife, so I'm gonna make sure the slit is slightly wider than my pencil marks. And what I'm gonna do is add a cut on both sides of that raised score line. It's not required, but I kind of like to have more of a slot. And then I'll just remove that. So this is actually the width of my score bump. And now I have a nice slot in my card base. This is where we're headed with this standing box card. So you're looking for this rectangular shape here. And then when you place the card on your work surface, it will stand up, um, but it also mails flat. So now I have my space here and it would be a good time to make the creases in your score lines so that the bump of the score is on the inside of the fold, therefore making it unnecessary to erase my pencil lines. Okay, so what's gonna happen is everything's gonna roll in and these two one inch tabs are gonna end up sticking together and that's what forms this rectangular shape. But we need to add our panel to the shape. How do we do that? Well, what I like to do is just thread the panel through the slot and then see how I have this one inch tab right here? I wanna glue this or adhere it, you know, your preferred method of adhesion. I wanna add some adhesive to that one inch tab and I'll center my panel onto the tab. So again, I'm eyeballing here. Maybe this feels very unusual for you to watch me eyeball something, but you could also just take a ruler and center. That's perfectly fine as well. And look at that. I'm exactly one and three eighths on both sides. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna take another round of adhesive, or you could use glue, and just attach it to the face of this other tab. So just go ahead and close the card so you're sandwiching your teal panel between the one inch flaps, and now I have my box card shape ready to go. Um, while the card's flat, on the front, we have a sweet little panel that's gonna fit right there, so I can, we can go ahead and add that at this point. So feel free to just flatten the card as you're working so that you are, you know, everything is as comfortable as it can be. And then sitting right on the top of the box, you're gonna have your get wild with it greeting. 
this is the equivalent of the any of a greeting card. So just center him within that space. There. Now all we have left to do is prep this to be placed onto the teal panel. To do that, I did use a paper distressing tool. Actually, this was a goodie in a club scrap kit in February of 2003, I believe it was, the Let Me Count the Ways kit. So some of our members who've been here for a really long time have one of these, um, but it's just a paper distressing tool that there's a little blade inside there, and if I run the blade along the edge of the paper, I kind of fray the edges a little bit. Okay, that step is completely optional. Then we have this pretty rust-colored ribbon. I'll just take a length of it and tie a bow around the panel. Next, we'll take the panel and apply some adhesive and attach it to the exposed area of the tool panel here. So you'll be centering left, right, and top edges, and that will give you the, just the right amount of reveal on your card base. And then to mail it, you can do this, or you could slide it up, but I think the ribbon might be in the way. Yeah. So just fold up from the bottom, and then when it stands, it's really super, super duper cute. So the remaining cards in the kit include one additional, just happy birthday, make it the best one yet, sentiment on the outside. And then we have another style as well. This one, uh, the greeting is toward the bottom here. So you're the leader of the pack and congratulations. And again, well soon, so you can join in. It's a jungle out there. I mean, these are just so super adorable. I have a lot of use for both of these cards as well lately, it seems. So again, four standing box cards. These are super fun. And what I would recommend is like making all of your slits at once, unlike doing the one, one at a time, like what we did together. And then these cards will be finished in no time. Next, take everything out of pocket B, and there will be a lot of little narrow pieces in there. Okay, here are the items I don't need, because those will be for additional cards. We're gonna make the first card that we see in our instructions on page three. So everything else will go into an A7 envelope, and I'll set that aside. And the pieces that we do need to make a card include the larger rust base with that single score line, and then an additional one and a half by seven inch rust panel. Then you have the ivory panel for the inside of the card, two additional narrow ivory strips for the outside, three strips of, of sentiments for the outside of the card, which include two elephants, and then one I didn't forget, and then two issue the best birthday ever is the inside of the card, and then we need three of these little, I'm calling them hinges, and we can go ahead and start by nesting, oh, I had four, that one goes back in my envelope, we can nest these narrow sentiments the two elephants and the I didn't forget right into the center of our rust colored pieces that way we kind of know where those are going to live then we have this rust colored card base I'm going to fold it so that the texture of the flap now is facing out and I'll just burnish that score line here and so this is going to be the outside of the card, but this is the inside, and that's where that other ivory panel will be placed. And we can go ahead and do that now. Just center that right in there. Okay. Then we have two more white or ivory strips. So they're going to find a home. On One of them will be on the outside or textured side of this rust strip. It should correspond and nest perfectly. And then the second ivory strip will be adhered to this narrow flap at the top or the left edge of the card. So we've specified two vertical cards and two horizontal cards, and right now we're making a vertical card. Now we have this strip, and if you were to just take this strip and place it onto the right edge of the card so it's aligned top to bottom, right edge, you can see that there's a gap in the middle. And there are three things that will join the gap between the two. Uh, sides. One, two, and three. So we simply need to attach these pieces by putting adhesive on the left and right edge only, and that will connect this little strip to the other side. 
Now I have a little trick to help you be successful in doing this. So let's just follow along with me. I'm gonna place my grid ruler onto my work surface with that narrow strip positioned horizontally. And I'm gonna find, using the rust panel as my measuring guide, I want to measure so that I'm at the center. That means I'm gonna be at three and a half inches from the left and right edges with my grid ruler. And I wanna be a half inch from the edge of the rust. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four lines on the grid ruler going down to the rust colored edge of the paper. Then if, I'm gonna start it with my, I didn't forget. This is the center. Whenever I'm centering something, I always start with the center. And I wanna attach this so that the reading is 7 eighths of an inch to the left and the right of my zero. And I'm only going to apply adhesive to the right edge of this piece, or in this case now it's at the bottom. And I will center this by resting it along the edge of my ruler and drop her down. Okay, then I can add the other two pieces and I'm going to position them so that the edges are resting on the number three on my ruler. So there's a number three and that's where the edge of my arch panel is resting. Make sure your panels are being adhered right side up and be sure you're only applying adhesive into this area because you don't want to have a card that won't open. Very frustrating. All right, so now I have adhesive just on the edge, rest it on the three. I'm looking right here. Good, so now I have these three narrow strips attached to a longer strip, and all I need to do then to finish the card is line them up, line up this panel with the edge of the card, and I will adhere these three spots. So. Flipping this over, I can see just pieces of adhesive just behind on only that side. Then just line up the edges of the card, press down those three tabs, boom. Everything's attached the way it's supposed to be. So it is a little bit of work figuring out with the ruler what the measurements will be, but so, so worth it. Then you can do the same thing to attach it on the inside so that you're sure that this greeting doesn't get attached to the wrong spot on the card. You want to have this inner sentiment hidden by the, the outer sentiment. So we can kind of follow the same protocol. So I'm centered three and a half on each side. It actually ends up being a little bit more because of the mat we don't have. And then just make sure you're centered left to right. In this case, I'm at seven or at three quarters of an inch from center. So here I am, three quarters of an inch from center. Now I'm gonna close the card. Everything's hidden the way it should be and the sentiment's on the inside. I did one thing differently on my actual card samples and it's just because I had a little more time and I really like the look of it. I took the narrow ivory strips and ran them through my embossing machine with a texture folder to add a real neutral pattern to the edges of the card. And I think that has a really beautiful effect. I did the same thing on all of the panels. So I did the same thing here on the thank you card. This is the other vertical version with the greeting centered from the inside. And the horizontal cards have the horizontal look going on. But what's different about them is that the sentiment has been added to the top of the three aligned pieces. You will also notice that I have cut the brown mat to match a tag shape that is on the cut of hearts. Let me show you how I did that. We'll begin by taking scissors and just cutting out one of the circles. And I find that if I open my scissors all the way up and then just slowly close it while turning, that seems to be the best way to actually cut a circle. <laughs> I did not have a punch this size, but check your stash of punches. Perhaps you have one that's this size and you'll notice that the circle fits in there perfectly. I believe I inked the edges of the circle with a little earth ink to just sort of take away any imperfections in my cutting, but I think in you know, the way this setting works, um, it really is quite forgiving. So just drop that down in there. I use some book binding glue from a needle tip applicator, and now my brad is prepped for usage. So this cut apart has what we ultimately want is a tag shape, and I'll so show you how I created that. Took the ruler, and the very first dashed line on the ruler, I'm aligning with the, the rust colored edge of the tag. 
And that way I have a perfect eighth inch border beyond the edge of that angle. Perfect. Now I will adhere the cut apart tag to my um, dark brown mat. To recreate that, I'll do the same thing. Now I'll align the edge with the dotted line on my ruler, the very first dotted line, which is an eighth of an inch, and just cut at an angle there to remove the tip. And now I have a tag shape with perfect margins. Finally, just uh, take a um, paper piercing tool. Actually, I'm not even quite centered. If you want, you can <laughs> measure your center and add the brad. Make sure it's really firmly pushed down before you spread the prongs at the back. And that's how we created that tag. Then you can go back and add the tag to the card, building it the same way we did before, and then staple a folded piece of ribbon to the left edge of the sentiment if you like. I've gathered everything I need for the two cards I want to show you, and all the rest of the pieces are safely tucked inside my A6 envelope, so I'll set that aside. And let's begin by preparing what we need for the first card you see in the instructions on page four. This is the t Stand Tall and Be Strong with the Giraffe. So we have the same type of approach here. We have to prep our um, elements for this card, and you'll notice the addition of an extra set of uh, cut lines here. But if you have a grid ruler, you really don't even need that. You can just follow the same steps. So you'll notice I'm aligning the first dashed line of my ruler with the edge of the artwork. So that's going to give me an eighth inch reveal that matches all the others on the other uh, sides. So I've trimmed, I've cut that with my craft knife, and then I'm going to pick up where that line left off and do the other half. If needed, I can join up those points of the lines. And now I have the perfect chevron shaped pocket. I'll repeat the process again for the little, boom, um, the little cut apart tag with the giraffe. And now I have a nice, really nice looking shaped tag. I ended up adding a decorative gold brad setting as well to this, so I'll make that. Next I'll attach the ribbon and the brad to my tag. So I cut my, I think it's a trapezoid, and fold it in half. That to me I always makes such a lovely, lovely ribbon. And then pierce through all the layers with my uh, paper piercing tool and a cork board. Then immediately add the brad. Nice. Another thing that I did was I ran this panel through my uh, embossing machine with a texture folder and I also distressed the edges. So I'll just do the distressing part. I can take my folded card base. This is the ivory that we scored earlier. Burnish that fold if you like and this will end up centering right on there. So we can do that now if you like. Sometimes I like to attach the panel last because if you have a ribbon that wraps around it or something, you don't want to have it trapped. Okay, then chevron shaped, cut apart. I'm grabbing for my ruler again as always so that I can center things the way I like, half inch from the bottom edge and centered. So before I adhere this, I want to be aware that this is going to become a pocket and therefore I can only add adhesive to the left right and bottom edge. So keep stay away from that angled chevron shape. Then just burnish that down. And the nice part about working with liquid glue is you can move things and adjust things before it cures. You just have to work pretty quickly. All right, and so once that's dry, you'll be able to slide this tag into the pocket. The card on the inside will remain blank and just available for you to write or stamp anything you want inside. On the other card, I'm just going to start, um, and we'll be making the, the third card that's called Hi There, Wild Thing is on the outside, and then How You Doing is on the inside. I'm just rounding these outer corners. And once again, if you'd like, you can add texture to the panel. That's completely optional. And I'll fold my ivory card base in half. So remember, earlier when we were trimming all of our cut aparts, we had a whole bunch of what I would call bonus artwork. This is these are strips of leftover space on an eight and a half by eleven that Jacqueline just chooses to 
put artwork onto in case we want to do something fun or funky with um, these leftovers. And I just decided I wanted to use them to decorate this card. I'm going to show you a little trick to add a chevron shape and at the same time get rid of this um, little piece on the edge of our scrap. So we're just going to put a nice little V using the 45 degree angle of my ruler. I'm going to rest the 45 degree angle along the edge of my strip. And I'll just draw a line. And then I'm going to move and add a 45 degree angle going the other way so that those points intersect. And now that I've made that X, I have a little spot where I can cut a nice little V to a point in the middle and I have this cute little piece I can attach to my card. All right, so there's two chevrons. I'm going to take this one and I want it to be just a little longer and I'll just snip a little V in the corner here and then I'll take this one. I'm just going to snip a V right in that too. Very, very sweet. So all you need to do is attach these pieces, add some ribbon and a brad setting to the upper left corner of this and you can attach it either straight on or at an angle. And let me show you that finished card. Here it is with the texture in the background, the longer skinnier uh, pieces and then the shorter ones at top and bottom. Very, very sweet. And then you can even add some fiber on the inside if you like. I use the remaining pieces to make just an L-shaped inter intersecting border strips for the um, 12th and final card in the set. That was a wild time. I hope you had fun making these greeting cards with Club Scrap's Gone Wild collection. If you haven't already, be sure to tune in um, to the page kit assembly. And with our Gone Wild page kit, we can make eight beautiful lands together as well. I'll see you there.